Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu wa jannatuhu. That is the peace of God be upon you and his mercy and his blessings and his paradise, his garden in this life and in the life to come. I begin now by calling what is known as the Avan. And in this particular position, I am the Muevin, that is the caller, the caller to Salah, the caller to faith. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hay ala salah. Hay ala salah. Hay ala al-falah. Hay ala al-falah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Translate for those of you who may not know the translation, because there are other than people who have converted to Islam or reverted to Islam on this Facebook presentation, I hope. I said Allah is greater four times. Allahu Akbar. And it is implied that Allah is greater than coolly shape than everything. And the whole phrase would be appropriately Allahu Akbaru Men Kuli shape. So the word Akbar is a comparative form. So if you've got a comparative form, you've got to be comparing it with something. And so Allah is comparing himself with everything. He says, I am greater than everything. I am more significant, more uh, 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 profound, more knowledgeable, more everything. The attributes that we have and characteristics that we have cannot match the Lord of all the world. So after saying that, I said, I bear witness that there's no deity but the deity God alone. And I use the term Allah, as you know, Muslims do use that term. But if you really wanted to translate it, it means the one and only deity, the one and only being that is worthy of worship and devotion and obeisance to. After saying that twice, I stated, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of God. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. I bear witness that Muhammad is indeed the messenger and the servant of Allah. Twice. And then we said, Hayya ala salah. That is, life is upon the prayer. Life is upon Worship of God, contact with God, devotion to God, cognizance of God. And then we said, after saying that twice, we said, Hayyal al falah. That is, life is upon the cultivation of the mind, the cultivation of this material world. And after doing so, we reach a state of falah, success. They even sound like success. They're coming out, falah. And then we said, Allahu Akbar, twice again, God is greater. And then we said, again, there's no deity but the one and only deity. And we happen to call him in Arabic, Allah. And as you may not know, and you may know, most of you know this, that the Arab Christians, they call the deity Allah. It's a very, very beautiful word, and it means the, Al is the, 
and you have a contraction, those people will argue with this, but there is a position, and I take that position too, that Allah is a contraction of Al and Ilahun. Praise be to Allah. So I begin the khutbah now by reciting from the wonderful surah entitled Taha. A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Taha. Ma anzalna alayka al Quran li tashkha. We have not sent down the Quran to you to be an occasion for thy distress or to be down about the fact that it has been revealed, that Allah sent it down. Illa But only or accept as an admonition to those who have fear of God or have a, a uh, part in their being that causes them to be in awe of God. The part of the human being that knows that there is a judgment day and there is a do and don't list. Tanjila mimman kalakal arda wa samawatil ula. A revelation from him who created the earth and the heavens on high. Arrahmanu alal ashish tawa. Allah. The merciful benefactor, Ar-Rahman, is one of the attributes of Allah, very prevalent in the Qur'an. In fact, you'll find it in the Qur'an 57 times. Praise be to Allah. 19 times 3 is 57. And you'll find this attribute, Ar-Rahim, in the Qur'an 114 times. Double the 57, right? 57, 57, 114. So I believe, O oh, Muslim, Allah has given you and I a message that he is the merciful benefactor giving all of the benefits to the creation. But even if we don't appreciate all of these wonderful benefits, he is doubly merciful and renew and restore and redeem us for not appreciating the bounty that he has bestowed upon the creation, which includes ourselves for sure. Lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa ma bayna huwa wa ma bayna huma wa ma tahta al-thara To him that is God, to Allah, belongs. He has the ownership of what is in the heavens and on earth and all between them and all beneath the soil. If you listen to that carefully, you can see that God is being very comprehensive. He owns the heavens. He owns the earth. He owns what is between the earth and the heavens. And he owns what is beneath the soil. Praise be to Allah. So the topic that I want to you know, discuss today is calling the people to Allah. Calling the people to faith. And I put a colon in the title on the Facebook page. A Muslim obligation. So I begin now just by reciting some ayahs that may have or do have in fact uh, the word or derivative of the verbal root da'a. Da'a. That is da'a and then a ain a. That's lengthened. But originally it was da'a But because of the smoothness and pleasantness of sound the Arab and Allah himself has, has opted to smooth it out and say da'a instead of da'a So here in the Quran, in the Surah 3, verse 38, I read it now. Hunalika da'a zakariya rabbahu kala rabbi habli milla dunka dhriyatan Taibatan in Naka Samuel Dua. Right then and there, Hunalika, right then and there, did Zachariah 
call or pray to his Lord, saying, O oh, my Lord, grant unto me from your from you good offspring, for surely you are the hearer of all calls and prayer. Allah hears all of the calls. He knows our call before the calls are made. He knows our prayers and our needs and our wants better than we do. For this is the creator that we worship. So where did this verse come from? Where did it follow, I should say? It followed the situation where Zachariah saw that Allah had bestowed great risk, sustenance, material and physical sustenance to his niece, Maria. And so he felt that, oh, Allah has really bestowed on her such great uh, spirituality and all of the characteristics that he is pleased with. So right then and there, after seeing that and coming to that understanding, he prayed to Allah to have good offspring himself coming from his loins. And we know the story has it that Allah gave him Yahya. He lives, trying to say it. Yahya. And a lot of times Muslims, they like the idea of saying Yahya. <laughs> but we know it's Yahya, air coming out. Hayya means life, as we said in the uh, Adhan. So continuing on, this word Dawatun, we call it Dawa. In fact, I heard people say Dawawan when you go out and invite people to the religion. I find it kind of repulsive, but some people don't mind people uh, uh, Englishizing uh, Arabic words. But Dawawan, <laughs> I think that's a little bit of a, a, a repulsive uh, stretch there. But anyway, Dawatun, it has a feminine T on it. And the professor told us many, many, many years ago when I was in the class, and it stuck, and it's qualified in the Quran itself. If you have a noun that has a feminine T on the end, it's called Tamarvuta. It's one of that thing. Warakatun, one sheet of paper. So Dawatun is one call, not a call to this sheikh or this imam or, or this madhab or this ideology, but a call to Allah, Dawatun. So I'm saying that in a very, very uh, serious way from this standpoint, that when you invite people to Al-Islam, the main thing that we should invite them to is the glorious Quran, Quran and Majid, and let Allah speak to them and talk to them and shape their minds and get them to think about who he is, and what he is, and so on, instead of inviting them to this ideology or that ideology, which we know these schools have clashes amongst themselves and they, as they say, uh, split hairs about insignificant matters sometime. In fact, I remember um, having a discussion when I was going to the prison one time, I'm gonna try to capsulize this cut by the day, where a brother who was of the so-called Shia uh, school, if you wanna call it that, or sect, if you wanna call it that, said that he knows for sure that Prophet Muhammad prayed with his hands and arms along his side. I said, yeah, how do you know for sure, man? He said, this is what the scholars say. <laughs> but interesting enough, um, I had a, um, a problem uh, with uh, my shoulder at one point in my life, and uh, I got in the habit of uh, praying sometime with my arms uh, along my side. And I still do occasionally now. And I feel more comfortable doing it like, like that. But traditionally, many Muslims just put their hands, as you probably know, in fact, I know you know if you're a Muslim, they put their hands, the right one over the, over the left one, over their navel cavity, right? So at any rate, 
the position of how you pray is not as important as your sincerity and your devotion and your focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we pray. So I'm saying to you that the main thing that you should do and we should do is get the Quran into the hands of the people. And after getting the hands of the people to receive this Quran, we continue ourselves to study the glorious Quran over anything else. And this is very, very important. In fact, I remember Imam Warfi Muhammad saying uh, when he was in Hinesville, Georgia, he did a lecture there many years ago. I was there. And he said, the title of it, I don't know if he came up with the title or someone else came up with the title was, The Quran, The Final Frontier. So it stands the reason that you would want to go into the final frontier, the trail that has not been blazed and will never be blazed completely, right? So I'm saying to you that your emphasis, my emphasis, our emphasis should be on understanding the Arabic language so we can understand this final revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us by way of the African Arab Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I say that directly because I know that there are people who pick up the Imam Warki Muhammad's uh, Ramadan sessions and go through them on a regular basis and uh, they get something out of it. But wouldn't you think that they would get more out of the Ramadan sessions if they also went into a posture of wanting to understand the Arabic language? And I have a book that I've written that will help you understand it and have the ability to do tafsir of the Quran. And I have not been across the water. I simply had a few classes at Wayne County Community College, and I do know for sure that Allah has blessed me with some insight that I know for sure that he has blessed me with some insight. And I say that in all humility. So you should know that you should be empowered. Empower yourself to be a student of the glorious Quran. So in the idea of inviting, da'a means he invited. It also means to, to invite, to call. So in the Quran, Surah 6, pardon me, Surah 16, verse 125, Allah reveals, Ud'u. Now notice that, real strong. Ud'u. Ud'u, it's a command. Call to the way, the path of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and Talk with them, not necessarily argue with them, but talk with them in ways that are best and most gracious. For thy Lord knoweth best who have strayed from his path and who receive guidance. So throughout the Quran, there are commands that Allah gives to us to do this and do that. Akimu salat, establish salat. Kul, say this, say that. And if you notice, the commands are very short and abrupt. Kul, say, Ud'u, call. He's commanding you and I to call the people. And we know that many Muslims have fallen down on calling the people to the faith. And I am inspired to do this clip by about calling the people to faith because I know that there are many people out there who have the opportunity to invite people to this way, but they are hesitant and they don't want to invite unless someone might ask them a question about the deen. But we should be proactive in inviting people to this way. And one of the reasons why you and I should be active in it is because we know many of us come from prisons, I didn't, from Jahiliya life. When we say Jahiliya life, we're talking about ignorant, impulsive life, drinking, gambling, uh, promiscuity, all of that. We come from all of that. 
and we see our family members, we see the society at large going in the path other than what God would have them to go in. In fact, the term is Darlene, and at the end of the al Fatiha, the prayer that we say so regularly, we said that we don't want to be of the Darlene, those who miss the mark, those who are going astray from the original nature that God has put us in. So you again, I again, we again, have an obligation to spread Al-Islam. Many times I got Qur'ans in my car and I see people out on the street, I extend the Qur'an to them. I extend pamphlets to them. And I have to admit that my brother William Bilal was the one that inspired me to be more active in Dawah, active in calling people to that one call. And that one call, again, is to Allah. And we can invite people to listen to this lecture or that lecture, but have the posture that the main thing that you want to encourage people to do is read the Quran, understand the Quran in the English language or whatever language they are you know, acquainted with, but have the mind and have the mission to understand Aluta Arabiya, that is the Arabic language. Praise be to Allah. So remember that verse, 16, 125, where Allah is commanding you and I to invite people to this way of life. And this word, Da'a, or derivative of this word, Da'a, that is Da'a, Ayn, and Aleph, or if you want to say what it was originally, Da'a, Ayn, and Wow, appears about 212 times. I say about because I looked at my concordance and I counted them, and I don't know if I did a good job of counting every one. But I have what we call the concordance of the Quran. And this is a tool that will help you understand the Quran better because you will be able to be a word tracker to find out all of the ayahs where Allah uses this or uses that in the glorious Quran. So continuing on, I see the time is running. I want to uh, bring it to your attention now and I'll try to just use some of the English as opposed to uh, reading the uh, Arabic. But anyway, in this particular verse, we have da'a Rabbahu. Thus it is, when affliction befalls human beings, he is likely, um, most of this is the uh, translation of Muhammad Asad, he is likely to cry out to his sustainer, turning unto him for help. But as soon as he has bestowed, that is, Allah has bestowed upon him a favor by his grace, he, that is the human being, she, forgets him whom he or she called on before and claims that there are other powers that could rival God and thus leads others astray from his path. And Allah commands us, say unto him who sins in this way, enjoy thyself for a while in this denial of the truth, yet surely you are those who are destined for the fire. In Naka men as have been nar, the fire, the fire of torment and punishment. So we are saying that you and I should be aware of this verse that we call on God when we are afflicted but let us call on God when things are going good and let us remember God, remember him and remember the many favors, the many things that he took you out of and protected you from when you were not aware and conscious of wanting to do the right thing and do what God would be pleased with. So I encourage you as I encourage myself to endeavor to grow in greater heights of devotion to the Lord of all the worlds. And pardon me, I'm going to take this hat off. I'm looking at myself and I can see that it's crooked. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Let me continue here. I remember reading, I should say, I remember seeing a movie. It was called The End. And I don't know who the actor was, but he was in a body of water and uh, he was thinking about committing suicide. 
And he figured that if he keep going further and further and further, the water is going to, you know, go over his head and he would, uh, you know, have his demise. So as he was talking to himself, going out there into the body of water, he just jumped back up and said, oh, I want to live. And then he came on back to the shore. And it appears from, as I recall it, that uh, he expressed some remorse for having wanted to kill himself. And I say to you, that many people have been in that point where they don't feel that they want to continue to live. But we know that God does not want us to be suicidal. He wants us to have the fortitude and the perseverance to fight off all of the, the tribulations and trials of this world. And if we have faith in him and we devote ourselves to him, he will make it easy and give us some sense of peace and tranquility, God willing. So I remember a friend of mine saying, uh, Sadiq, it's hard, but it's fast. <laughs> and we know that many times things don't seem to be fair but we know that through having obstacles, it builds muscle. It builds appreciation and gratitude when you overcome the obstacles. So continuing on, we have the word da'awatu. Lahu da'awatul haqqi walladhina yad'una min dunihi la yes. Tajibuna lahum shayin illa kabasiti kafayhi illa mai li yab lugu, pardon me, li yab luga fahu wa ma hua bi baligihi wa ma dua. Ul kafirina illa fi dollar. For him alone, listen to this, it's in the quote of what I just said a little while ago. For him alone is the call of truth. We should be calling people to God. And those who are calling to anything besides him. In other words, I'm saying, if you call people to the Salafi movement, you call people to uh, Wahhabism, you call people to, uh, to W.D. Muhammad, who's a good person to be called to in terms of listening to what Allah blessed him with, but you want to know, and you should remember, that what made W.D. Muhammad, what made the good people, is the glorious Quran. I hope you understand what I'm saying to you, and I hope you understand that no one has a monopoly on the knowledge and there's more knowledge in the Quran than in the heads and minds of the collective group of scholars and people who have lived and are living today. You should know that, that the focus should be on the Quran. So continuing on, this is the Surah 13, 14, that is chapter 13, verse 14. They get no response. No more than if they were to stretch forth their palms or hands for water to reach their mouths, but it reaches them not. For the prayer of those without faith is nothing but futile wandering in the mind. So in other words, God is telling you and I that we should call people to God. And if they happen to go off into this meth have and that meth have, that's their own, you know, Volition, their own choice, you see. And if we did spend more time calling people to the Quran and empower them to understand it for themselves, we would have less, less confusion and more progress amongst the Muslim Ummah. So here's a beautiful commentary that uh, Abdullah Yusuf Ali put in on this particular verse, that is 13, 14. You see, a hawk equals truth, right. This is very powerful to me. What is due, befitting, and proper. All these meanings are to be understood here if we worship anything other than Allah. 
whether it is, listen, whether it is idols, we got some, stars, the physical stars, and the Hollywood stars, the basketball stars, the, the so-called uh, scholar stars, powers of nature, spirits, or deified men, or self, or, or power, or wealth, science, or art, talent, or intellect. Our worship is both foolish and futile. And I add, will cause you and I to be of the darling, those who go astray. So God is clearly getting you into the mindset that the worship is to him and to him alone. Praise be to Allah. So in trying to come to the close here, I just want to refer you to Surah 40, verses 41 through 44, and I won't be able to elaborate like I would like to because the time is running. But I remember reading this years and years ago before I knew any Arabic, and it affected me in a very positive way. And I used to think that this was Musa, you know, saying these words, but when you look at it again, you'll find that it was just a common believer that was reciting this appeal, this appeal. So I read the appeal now, starting with verse 41 of Surah 40. And oh my people, how strange it is for me to call you to salvation while you call me to the fire. I recited this verse some weeks ago, and it's always good to read the Quran over and over again. Allah tells us that we should read it over and over again and inculcate it into our hearts and minds and our life activity. You do call on me, this is this believer, to blaspheme against Allah and to join with him partners of whom I have no knowledge. A lot of people may not like me for saying this, but uh, if you say that the Hadith and the Sirah is uh, secondary sources to the, to, to the Quran, then that is a partner. And Allah tells us in the Quran, فَصَلْنَاهُ تَفْسِيلًا Pardon me, فَصَلْنَاهُ تَفْسِيلًا And we have explained it, a complete explaining. It's what we call a cognate accusative. When you get a chance in the English language, look up the word cognate accusative. To give you another example of it is uh, he ran very fast, as fast as he could. You tell you how he, he ran, but you tell the person that he gave his all, just like the horse in the Surah 100. Allah tells us about how the horse will give his life for the rider. And Allah wants us to give our life for him in devotion. And Allah swears, well, I swear by the horses that run with the panting breath. <sighs> They're trying to give their all to the master. And it's been reported that some horses, they will run so fast that their hearts peter out trying to obey the rider. And it's no accident, as Imam Muhammad said, that they have engines and whatnot where they say, 25 horsepower, 100 horsepower, those kinds of ideas, HP, horsepower. So they are letting you know that they recognize the power of the horse in giving its all to the rider. So if you run a lawnmower over the horsepower that is designated to take, it will fizzle out. So continuing on, you do call up on me to blaspheme against Allah and to join with him partners of whom I have no knowledge. And I call you to the exalted in power who forgives again and again. Without doubt, you do call me to one who is not fit to be called to. We don't call anybody to just things other than Allah. We could say, well, yeah, this person has some insight about this or some, some insight about that, but we never put them on a deified pedestal and don't look at ourselves as having the ability to understand what this person 
past, and then some. And Allah said, never could you exhaust the wisdom of, of the Quran, or his wisdom, I should say. Manafidat kalimatullah. And you will never exhaust the words of God. If you had, uh, what, seven oceans and you added uh, to, to that supply, if all the trees, 3127, if all the trees were, were uh, ink, and probably if all the trees were pins, and you had seven oceans and, and then some, never could you exhaust the wisdom of God. So without doubt, you call me to one who is not fit to be called to, whether in this world or in the hereafter. Our return will be to Allah, and the transgressors will be companions of the fire. And then the next verse, but as for me, this, this believer, I commit myself, my affair, my life unto Allah or God, for surely Allah, that is God, sees all that is in the hearts of his servants. This is portions of the Muhammad Asad translation with me adding more to it. Soon will you remember what I say to you now? My own affair I commit to Allah, for Allah ever watches over his servant. This is Abdullah Yusuf Ali's translation. And it's a bit different from uh, what Muhammad Asad said. But what they're translating is this. In Allah Basirun Bil Ibadi. And so Basirun means to see. That doesn't necessarily mean to watch over, as Abdullah Yusuf Ali is saying. So Muhammad Asad says, that Allah sees, and we know he doesn't see with physical eyes, with the iris and all that we got, right? But he has seen ability, but yet he is a, a non-physical reality. You should remember that. We should remember that. Continuing on, another verse. When my servants ask you concerning me, I am indeed close to them. I listen to the prayer of every suppliant, every caller, when he call upon me. This is Allah telling you and I that. Let them also, with a will, listen and respond to my call. Let us respond to this Quran. And believe in me that they may be of the guided ones. Praise be to Allah. La Allahum Yarshudun. They are being guided in order that they will be presently guided on into forever. Present continuous, inshallah. So I'm trying to come to the close now. And among his signs is this, that heaven and earth stand by his command. Then, listen to this, then when he calls you by a single call from the earth, behold, you straightway, right away, come forth. So Allah is telling you that this da'watun, is a single call in the translation, pardon, translation by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. He's acknowledged what I said to you earlier that da'watun, which is in this verse 3025 of the Glorious Quran, means a single call. So you should know again that the call is to Allah. In fact, I remember getting the Quran myself, and uh, people say, Well, was it Elijah Muhammad's teaching that, uh, that convinced you? No. Was it W.D. Muhammad that convinced me? No, it was my reading of the Quran in English. I think I read it in one day or two days back in 73. And I remember a brother telling me on my TV program that uh, he picked up a Quran in the library somewhere and he read it and he saw that it was what he wanted to be about and he had to go find the Muslims <laughs> to see where they were. In fact, the brother's name was uh, Sabir Diab, right out of uh, the Detroit area. I pray Allah he's still living and doing well. But that's what he told me and told the audience on the TV program that I had years ago. So again, 
Quran is it. Quran is it to wrestle, if you will, with the people and cause them to come to faith. And it's within our nature to come to faith, right? Because we are born with faith. So in concluding, let me just make a pause here and then recite the last of the verses. Rabbana la tzik kulubana ba'da idn hadaytina wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahab. Our Lord caused not our hearts to swerve and deviate after you got it as a right. For we still upon us mercy from your presence for surely you are the grandest of the givers. Alhuma nesta inuka, wanesta kuruka, wanukmi no bika, wanet wakalu aleka, wanufni aleko kaya, wanes kuruka, wala na kuruka. Oh Allah, we ask for your help, we seek your forgiveness, we believe in you, we trust in you, and we extol and exalt you in the best manner. We are thankful to you, Allah, and we are not ungrateful. Here's a very, very touching. I, uh, even in the English. And I can remember even Muhammad reciting it in a very warm and spiritual way. And even my brother in law, William Bilal, he, he used to say it too. Our Lord, we have heard the call of one calling us to faith. Who is that one? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all of the da'wah workers. Not the ones that are Dawawa, but the Dawa workers, the Dais, the callers, the inviters to this way. We have heard the call of one calling us to faith. Believe you in the Lord, and we have believed. And then the wonderful dua, our Lord, forgive us our sins, blot out from us our iniquities, and take to thyself our souls in the company of the righteous. Our Lord, grant us what, the, what you did promise unto us through your messengers and save us from shame on the day of judgment for thou never breakest your promise. Innaka la tukliful miyad Surely, surely, Allah never breaks his promise. And we should remember Allah, should remember him much. So in closing, I want to close with a wonderful ayah of the Quran, 5921, which is to me a da'wah message, a call message from Allah. Then you and I know that everyone is a potential revert when I say revert, revert to Alice Lyme, revert to the original nature that we came forth with out of the wombs of our mothers. And those of you who know of my lectures and whatnot know that I recite this verse often, and I believe Allah has blessed me to understand it, and I haven't seen any of the other Mufasirs explain it the way I'm going to try to explain it real quickly now. And I read it now, 5921. Lao Anzelna have al Quran ala ala jabalin raaitahu kashiyam mutasaddian the kashatillahi atilkal amfalu nad ribuhalin nas la allahum yatafakkarun and had we sat down Allah said if we had sat down this Quran on a mountain surely surely you saw it humble itself and break into pieces for fear of Allah. Desire to, to, to obey Allah, not necessarily fear. Such are the similitudes, the parables. He's telling you and I, this is a parable that we propound, not rebohaling that, to the humans in order that they be thinkers and reflectors. Yet that fact, it even sounds like a, a lot of... Uh, Movement, right? And thought. Yet the fakarun, fakarun is the root. Fa, ka, and ra. So, 
in the course of my studies, I know that lao means hypothetically if. So Allah is prefacing this particular ayah with lao, which is letting you know that don't see this as being uh, something that is in the realm of reality. He said, if I were to do this, and if I had would sit down this Quran on a mountain, so right away, if you want to go off into fairy tale land, so to speak, or non-reality, you would think that a mountain would broke would break up into pieces if this Quran on sheepskin or on the paper that we have it in right now was sent down on the mountain. That it would cause the mountain to disintegrate or, or, or go into you know leveling. You got you know mountains that's twenty six thousand feet high, like Mount Everest, right? So that's not the message. So I studied in the lexicon real quickly. When it says it in the Arabic idiom, listen carefully now. If I want to say to you that you're a hard, hard headed person, who a jebel? He is a mountain. Or he, a, she is a mountain. I mean, she's hard headed. He's hard headed. He's immovable from a tic, particular posture, you see, in a deviant way. So God is saying, oh, Muslims, and non-Muslims and potential reverse to Al-Islam, that is submission to the will of God. That's what we want. As Jesus said, not my will be done, but your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This mountain is a hard-headed person, perhaps a, a crackhead, perhaps a, uh, uh, a serial killer, or whatever, uh, a person like Trump, a person like uh, Richard Nixon, tricky Richard Nixon. <laughs> you all know what they called him for real, but we just say tricky Richard Nixon, Mussolini, Putin, all of these types. And God is letting you know, had I sit down this Quran on one of those types, another good example would be Abu Lahab, who was the only person mentioned by name in the Quran, to be a resident of the hellfire, and he knew of this revelation while he lived, and he was stubborn like the mountain, and he didn't change. He was immovable from his posture of uh, castigating his nephew Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So continuing on, I got a race now. And had we sit down this Quran on a hard-headed person, I'm trying to say the mountain is hard-headed person, surely you saw that person humble himself humble herself and be in awe of God and declare, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. That is, there's no duty but Allah alone and Muhammad is the messenger. And then God tells us in the concluding part of it, such are the similitudes that we propound to human beings. Again, in order that they will reflect and ponder. So shouldn't you have the mind that everyone that you come in contact with, if you invite them, perhaps they will change their ways and become a Muslim? I give Qurans to doctors, uh, police officers, people uh, in the rental car agency at, at the airports, etc. And you never know who is going to take this book and become a revert. So I encourage you, as I encourage myself, to be more active in Dao. And we know we need it because our mass kids are not growing. They seem to be becoming less uh, populated. And a lot of it is because of the lack of movement, a lack of progress. When we say progress, we're talking about material progress. We're talking about spiritual progress. We're talking about competency, and we're talking about having a spirit of wanting to be excellent in all that we do. And until we have that posture, we're going to have these problems. We need to come away from human being worship. I repeat, come away from human being worship. And the first thing a person will say, I don't worship no human beings. A lot of times people do and they don't even realize it. So I, again, 
encourage you to start spreading Al Islam amongst your family, amongst the whole society that you interact with. And those of you who have something to say about Al Islam, why don't you get on Facebook, even for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and spread the message. You may want to do a thing on how you came to Al Islam, you know? And people will appreciate it. And this stuff is being piped all around the world. And real quickly, how did I become a Muslim? Well, it was destined, obviously. Well, how did I become a revert? The real short story is I was in a barber shop. And I hadn't known anything about Al Islam at all. And as Allah would have it, I decided to get my hair cut that day. But I cut my own hair. In fact, I just cut it <laughs> maybe a day or so ago myself. But at any rate, that day, I had my hair cut at a barber shop. And the brother was Yusuf Abdul Hafiz out of uh, the Detroit, Michigan. And he sold me an album by Elijah Muhammad. And I went on home and laid down on my rug. And Elijah Muhammad made this statement. If a man does not treat you right, how is he going to teach you right? That opened up Al-Islam to me. I reasoned that I know that this Caucasian man, this society uh, has sick dogs on us, didn't want us to go to the universities, tar and feathered us, and cut our women open when they were nine months pregnant so that they would put fear in the other slaves that they kidnapped from Africa and stole our religion from us. Al-Islam was our religion in West Africa in particular, for sure, and other parts of Africa. They took our religion, that old-time religion that the slaves used to talk about. So you who want to hold on to uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and the other, you know, stuff that uh, is other than what the Quran beckons you to, may Allah have mercy on you and cause you to see one day that the Quran is it. The Prophet Muhammad is the excellent model. Uswatun Hasanatun. So I close now and I see I've spoken about 52 minutes and I apologize for the uh, longevity of this particular khutbah. And I close now with uh, a dua. Rabbi habli hukmaw wa hikna bisalihin which Ali Lisan Sitkin, Phil Akirin, Waj Ali Min Wabatati Janat and Naim, Wag Philia B and Nahu Kenna, Minat Darling, Walla Tutsli, Yoma, you Batun. Our Lord, bestow upon us wisdom, unite us with the righteous, grant us honorable mention on the tongue of truth, and make us the inheritors of the garden of bliss, of the garden of bliss and joy, and forgive our forefathers for those who were, and they were astray, and do not let us be in disgrace and humiliation on the day that we are raised for the final judgment. Amin. Ikama. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة خد قامة الصلاة خد قامة الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Arrahmanirrahim Maliki Yawmiddin إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين وَلَا عَصَرَ إِنَّ الْإِنْسَانَ لَفِي كُسْرَ 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Rabbana hablana min ajwajina wa duriyatina kurata ayunan wa tawni lil muttaqina. Amen. Our Lord, grant unto us mates and offspring that will be the comfort of our eyes. And give us the grace to be leaders in taqwa that is devotion to you. Amen. Rebellion, what the cup bell do our, our Lord accept our call. Do I also relates to da'a. Do I call a supplication to the Lord of all the worlds? They say talk is cheap, and it's not cheap. There's a lot of power in the words that Allah tells us in the Quran. Wakali metullah, he yell yeah. And the words of Allah are exalted to the heights, and he is the mighty, the wise. This book, Alugatul Arabiya. The Arabic language instruction manual. The name of this particular publication is Lugatut Tanzil. It was endorsed by Imam Warfi Muhammad on uh, July 6, uh, 2008. And I encourage you, I exhort you to be a student of the Arabic language so that you can understand the Quran so you can get more utility, more energy out of it and help the world in a material way. So certainly the African Americans need material wherewithal and much more financial stability. So this book will help you in all aspects of your life. It gives you spirit and energy. I heard Imam Muhammad say one day, you're not going to do no more than what your spirit allows you to do. 
And I am 70 some years old, I can tell you the exact number. And I was up to uh, five o'clock this morning. Had entered, made my Easter prayer and stayed up to five o'clock this morning. So I'm telling you that you should be a student. Telling you, not forcing you, but encouraging you to know that this language is, can be had and you can understand it and it's a lifelong study process. So if you are interested in this book called Lugatu Tanzil, that is the language of revelation, you can contact me, Sadiq at msn.com, S-I-D-D-E-Q at msn.com. And you can go directly to the uh, shopping cart, SadiqJihad.com. So I close with that commercial, if you will, and I give you a phrase that I love to say. La yazalullahu muksiman ilaykum. That is, may God never stop being a muksin, an excellent doer to you all. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu wa jannatuhu. That is, the peace of God be upon you and his mercy and his blessings and his garden in this life and in the life to come. And I conclude with what has come to be a staple amongst the Muslims. I don't know who started it, but many times you'll see on Facebook, Juma. Jumu'a Mubarak. And I have been saying for quite a while now that Jumu'a has a feminine T on it. That means one congregation, right? Jumu'atun. I told you that the feminine T means one of that thing. One congregation. Jumu'a Mubarakatun. Since Jumu'a has a feminine ending, then Mubarak, Mubarak has to have a feminine ending too. That's why when I give people that particular greeting, I say again, Jumu'a Mubarakat. It's not hard to just add an A to that K. Jumu'a Mubarakat. 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 Jumu'a Mubarakat. And if you want to just say it all the way out, it would be Jumu'atun Mubarakatun. It's rhythm and rhyme throughout the glorious Quran. So this is a rule that Allah himself uses that you have noun and adjective agreement. You don't believe your brother? Ask somebody who you think knows and they will tell you, Sadiq is right. <laughs> so again, Jumu'ah Mubarak. May you have a blessed Jumu'ah. And you got some people saying that that's bitter for you to say Jumu'ah Mubarak. You know, uh, pardon me, it's bitter to say Jumu'ah Mubarakah. Well, innovation is good in many instances. <laughs> That's how the world has developed as it has because of technological advancement. People who dare to do things differently and explore and come up with new stuff. Praise be to Allah. So again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Signing off. And also I have on YouTube many lectures, Sadiq Jihad.